get when you combine a Dora award-winning director choreographer, an exciting new Canadian composer, and a group of strong, accomplished dancers who have performed on stages across the country from Charlottetown to the Citadel and are passionate about creating new musicals that use dance as the storyteller. Well, you get the Monster Collective. Joining me today is director, choreographer, Stephanie Graham and the mind behind Monster, as well as two members of the Monster Collective. We have Sarah Obrecht and Natasha Strilchuk. Thank you all for joining me. Thanks for having us, Jenny. My pleasure, absolutely. So let's start at the beginning. Where did the inspiration for Monster come from? Um, well, my one of my mentors, former CEO and artistic director of the Globe Theatre, Ruth Smiley, for years, had been saying to me, Stephanie, what kind of art do you want to create? What do you want to say with your art? What do you want to put out into the world? And, you know, of course, you're like, well, you know, I think I want to do this or that. But we were all on this crazy hamster wheel of this business, and there never seems to be enough time. Anyway, sidebar. Many fast forward a few years later, I'm sitting in a meeting with Mitchell Marcus at Musical Stage Company, actually talking to him uh, about theater making movement, which of course Sarah and I <laughs> co-founded. And um, mm -hmm. he said, you know, Steph, you and Kevin should do something together, like something that's, you know, story driven with dance or movement. And so, you know, that seed got planted. And, and then of course the pandemic happened. And I said to myself, well, I don't have an excuse anymore about time. Mm -hmm. So I really sat down and I, I, I presented Kevin with three different ideas and he really gravitated towards this one. He, mm -hmm. I think he felt it was really contemporary and relevant. And I think as artists, we all struggle with mm -hmm. imposter syndrome. And as women, I think we have so many voices coming from the outside saying, we're not this, we're not that, we're not this. We all have, well, not everyone, but a lot of people have that running commentary in their head. Um, uh, things that we say to ourselves that really just shouldn't be there, <laughs> but yeah. somehow we justify it. So the piece is really developing into something about like, how do we coexist with this, this voice? Mm -hmm. I heard a collective, yes, <laughs> when you said that. I feel like that's so very relatable. And especially when we're talking more about like mental health and we're talking about self-care and about being really honest and authentic, especially when we've had so much time, like you've said, to really sit with ourselves in that space. So I think it's so timely um, that a piece like this is being created. And that is so relatable. <laughs> So you brought on Kevin Wong that we just were talking about um, to work on the music, who is an exciting Canadian composer. And you also brought on writer Ellen Denny to do script supervision. What was it about them that made you want them to be part of the Monster Collective? Well, Kevin, again, I think he's one of the most exciting new Canadian writers in music theater. And I've always just gravitated towards his music. I think it's, it's really exciting. And, um, you know, we've collaborated on a few things over the pandemic and sort of really have a great working relationship. And and then, of course, you know, my own imposter syndrome, like I've never written anything. I don't know what I'm doing. I need someone to help me, <laughs> someone who actually knows how to write things. So <laughs> that's when I reached out to Ellen Denny and mm -hmm. said, I think we need someone to help us craft like the story and make sure we're being really clear so Ellen's been a great help to the entire collective of asking us, like, is the story clear here? And really asking us great questions. Getting to watch him compose in real time, like in action, was probably one of the coolest rehearsal yeah. hall experiences of my career. Like, it's really I, I was incredible. blown away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I bet. Well, that leads to my, my next question. Brilliant segue, Sarah Brecht. Um, what was the process creating as a collective, say for people who maybe have never worked in a collective before or who aren't familiar with that sort of process, take us through that. You've got like 15 plus people working on one piece. It was so special and I can't wait to keep learning because I think in the pandemic, it really taught me that we we all just continue to learn and there there's never sort of a stopping point for 
us as artists, like we can always continue to grow. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely something in terms of hopefully being a director one day or a choreographer or whatever it is, um, that this collective came at exactly the right time for me as well. And I think most of us would say that mm -hmm. because it was really aligning with creatively the things that I wanted to do and, and the things that I felt were most important for continuing to grow and continuing to learn and just making myself like the best performer and best person I can be because I'm surrounded by all of these kind people. And I think that's exactly what I think creative teams need to be is they need to support their artists and they need that's that is the way that you're going to get the best work out of them. And I think every single person involved, like Stephanie said, comes from such a different background, despite maybe saying, oh, we're all sort of like strong dancers first, that that's like why we all relate or, mm -hmm. but we actually all come from very different sort of personal backgrounds. So we have a very, like each have a very unique story to tell. And so I learned from every single person. It's not just about being an artist, although that's very strong in the piece, but it's also just the human experience of we're always trying to do our best. And sometimes that means a negative voice is going to come into our selves and say, oh, you're not doing enough. You're not enough. You're whatever it is. And, and so I think that's relatable on every level. I love that. It's so crazy, right? How every so often a project comes at just the right time that just hits in just the right spot. Why is a piece like Monster and the creation of more dance-driven theater so important to Canadian theater? Why do we need more of it? If you think of those like golden age shows that have, you know, your singers that are the, you know, the leads in it. And then we've got a chorus of 30 dancers. And a lot of times I think that is the misconception about musicals is that, okay, the dancers are the, are the background, we're the, are the backup to, to these characters rather than, you know, being an equally important part of the world in the theater. I think a lot of new work is being made and it's super exciting, but I think it, often, I'm not going to say all the time, but often um, is neglecting dance as an art, as, as a storytelling device or in the, or in the script. So what was cool about this is it, it was a very unique process. I mean, obviously the devising of it um, collectively, but also that we were leading with movement and, um, and collaborating with Kevin, the composer in, in real time, as I said, was, was really, really cool. I think the misconception sometimes does come from people that don't necessarily have a dance background thinking, oh, I'm not a dancer. So dance doesn't affect me. Or, or you know, a composer's going, I don't know, I don't understand dance. I'm not going to include that because this is, you know, this is my discipline that I understand. And so I'll, you know, I'll write what I know, which is this. But um, one thing that was pointed out at theater making movement, <laughs> not to plug it again, but one thing that, that was brought to the forefront, um, I think it was by Inger McKinnon, who's a movement director, who's, uh, she's a Canadian movement director who's based in the UK. She was talking about like, we all have, we all have a body. And so regardless of whether you're, you know, a leading lady who doesn't have to kick their face wearing a plate, you still have to move your body on the stage. So I, you know, I, I, I think that's kind of where we're hoping to kind of shift that um, that pendulum a bit, or, or at least kind of um, educate uh, uh, theater artists about creating theater with movement as a as a component, because we all have a body. Whether you're, you know, going to do that triple pirouette, kick your face, or whether you know it's just how you're walking. Mm -hmm. um, in space. Stephanie, do you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, and I think there's a universality in movement and how we understand movement as a human. So by telling parts of the story with movement, you actually don't need words. And everyone on the planet, whether what language you speak, can understand what that narrative is. And I think that's pretty powerful. Where, where, when, how do we watch Monster, the initial piece uh where can people find it you can go to our website um monstercollective.ca and you can watch our trailer you can meet the cast and creatives and then you can also book a ticket online and it's pay what you can suggested donation five to ten dollars 
But if you want to donate more to support the project, please do. All right, Stephanie Graham, Sarah Obrecht, Natasha Strilchek, and Dog. Uh, thank you all so much for taking the time to chat. All the best with Monster. Cannot wait to see it and can't wait to keep track of all the waves that you all are making in our business. Thank you for, for doing what you do. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you. thank you, Jenny. All right, here it is, y'all, the trailer for Monster. Yeah. Uh -huh.